problem in Jewish writing, the problem of evil. From the very beginning of Jewish thinking, the problem of evil has been discussed and has been agonized over. What that really means, to put it in its most concise form, there are four premises that cannot coexist. What are the four premises? A, that Hashem exists. B, that God is all-knowing. C, that God is all-powerful. D, that God is all-good. And all these are intertwined into one really premise. And that evil exists. Why could those four not coexist? Because if God exists, is all-knowing, He knows about evil, He's all-powerful, He can change the course of evil, and He's good, then why don't you do something about it? That's the question. And yet evil exists. Some people will deny the fourth premise. For example, Buddha said there's no such as evil in the world. Why is there no evil in the world? It's all an illusion. There's no real suffering. Therefore, one can conclude that Buddhism is a very immoral, in quotes, religion. Because they don't see evil. It says all of reality is really what he calls in the, in, the, in the Buddhist term is maya. Maya means an illusion. That means suffering to death is not really suffering to death. It's an illusion that you are seeing. All that one has to do is simply go into one's own meditative state, meditate, think, and that solves all problems. So, <clears throat> Buddhism doesn't, doesn't accept that evil really exists. There, there are some philosophers to that degree. Rabbi Soloveitchik's position over here, as Judaism is actually also, evil is real, it's powerful, it's overwhelming, and it's there. And yet, God of course exists, of course God is all good, of course God is omnipotent and, and omniscient, how do all of these premises, assumptions, these facts, he would call them, how do they all coexist? Who manipulates That's, evil? I'm sorry? Who manipulates evil? Who does it? Who does it? We. But the question is, we have to, we have to go beyond this. Wait, give me a second. We have to go beyond this and figure out what is the source of evil and where does it come from? Now, when Soloveitchik has a very unique approach to this problem, even of course he wrote, called it the effect, the voice of my lover, Max in the aftermath of the Holocaust, which was the most powerful expression of evil that we as a people ever experienced. Massive, overwhelming. As the rhetoric begins, I summarize what we read last week, that this is an issue that has been struggled with by Moshe, Yirmiyahu, Habakkuk, and of course the most prominent personality is Eeyore. Interesting <coughs> is that nobody has a very simple answer to this issue. One does not simply say, look, God is good. Close the book. And story, go home. And that's the end. Why not? Because they all experienced evil to the depths of their souls. They are suffering with what's going on in their lives. Yimyao sees the Hurban. He sees children slaughtered. Where's the Torah? Uh, in Yimyao's case, Yimyao was not able to pray the full prayer because of that. If you know the Gemara, of course, in Masichet <coughs> Yoma, it says, Yimiyah could not say, Ha'ol ha'gadu'a gibur ga'nura. Ayyeh nurotah. Where's his awesomeness? Where's his great strength? I cannot say that part of the tefillah, because obviously God cannot be nura, cannot be uh, gibur. Because look what's happening in the world. He could not pray that. Because they believe that God steals truth, and I don't feel this to be true, I cannot say this statement. It's a very radical, powerful statement. But the man who is living through the evil has to respond to it with honesty, with integrity, and with truth. If he were to say, where he sees children being slaughtered, then that would not be an honest statement of Kadosh Baruch Hu. Unless you really believe it. If you really believe, yeah, God, you're wonderful, you're great, there's a great, wonderful manifestation of your kindness and mercy to see a kid thrown into the crematorium. If you could say that and really believe it, then you're okay, then you can really do it. But most could not do so. And you will note Berkowitz in, in his introduction, which is one of the two most brilliant pages that I've ever read to this book, where he says there's a holiness to the faith of those who did say when they saw the kids being thrown in, but there's an equal holiness of unbelief. Those who could not sustain the faith in the, in the sight of these is also holy, and we cannot judge them. What happens in our tefillot? Let's say, say something simple like the end of Birk Pantazon. We say, Lora Iti Tani Benazim Lovakesh Lakesh. Right, okay, that's, that's, that's a very good, right. How do you say that? that? How do I say it? How do you say that? Correct. Right. So, again, I, I, it's not a simple answer, and we'll get to all that as we go along, but I would read Berkowitz's book in terms of that particular issue. And he says, when one is Job, when one is Eeyore, feeling the afflictions in your body, then it's a different set of rules. Same rules do not apply. And we certainly cannot judge them. We are not Job, we are Job's brother, as he puts it into in, in the introduction of his book. <clears throat> and 
with that in mind, he tries to deal with the problem of evil. What can one say in the face of evil? And so Vajic's discussion over here is that he first says that this is a very intractable problem. It's the most problematic issue that Judaism has ever had to face. How do the righteous suffer? How do the evil seemingly go free? What are we supposed to do when we confront evil on a massive, overwhelming level? What is the halakh answer to the problem of evil? Now, this is a, a critically important point, because it's typical of Rabbi Soloveitchik, wherein even a philosophical problem is rooted in halakha categories. He has made halakha not simply halakha, but he's used halakha to be the focal point around which all Jewish thought emerges from. This is very difficult, for example, something like, like Abraham Yeshua Heschel, where Rabbi Heschel sees halakha with a Shemel Mitzvah person himself personally. He kept halakha, but his philosophical orientation was very different. It didn't go hand in hand with his halakha. And in some cases, I'm sure his philosophy impacted upon his halakha. That's true too. But for Rabbi Salah Egypt, the focal point of all of life is halakha, and all philosophical issues, whatever you're going to be dealing with, is all halakha. This is the key to all of Rabbi Soloveitchik's thought, to appreciate the centrality of halakha even in philosophical problems. Now, <clears throat> what does the Rav say? Point number one. The Rav rejects all attempts to explain away suffering as illusion. Suffering exists. One <coughs> cannot deny the reality of evil. You're suffering, you're in pain, what do I do now? How can anybody imagine this an illusion? How could anybody try to uh, well, again, there, there, there are illusion. close it's to a billion people in the world who believe that today, number one. All Buddhists but if, but if believe that. But if they see somebody suffering, they say it's, it's not illusion. real? It's not real. It's not really happening. It's an illusion. It's not perception. It's temporary, maybe. Or well, is it they, they, they say it's temporary? They say this doesn't exist. They say it's, it's an illusion. Reality is an illusion to them. Something else. The idea is if you meditate enough, you can... You know, uh, ignore transcendent. the suffering, transcend it. Transcend it. It's not real. What's right. really real? Real, real is your, is your meditation. So because you see something that really exists in a, in a real sense, so they ignore it. About a billion of these... Ignore it. You know, look, you ever went to India? Ever go to India? No. No. Go to India one of these days. Right. And you see the holy cows walking on one side of the street, and you see the starving beggars literally dropping dead of starvation in the street. And ignore it. You see bodies covered with flies, literally ignored. But you know why it's ignored? Because it's not really real. I mean, to that degree, there's an insensitivity to human life. Judaism will not say it. Judaism will attack the problem. Not maybe understand why it's happening, but at least attack the problem that exists. So number one, one cannot deny the reality of evil. It's too contrary to the human experience. We experience pain and suffering and evil, but that's real. Evil is a fact that cannot be denied. Yesh, sever, ba'olam, there is suffering in the world, point number one. Number two, many have tried, the Rambam and others have tried to philosophically explain evil. All kinds of solutions. As the Rambam would say, evil is a privation of good. It's simply in the same way that there's an absence of Darkness is the absence of light. Evil is the absence of good. It's not also, in a certain philosophical sense, real. So in the absence of good. Now, does this really solve anything or not? No. My problem is that it doesn't really solve anything. But the Rambo, again, try to understand the Rambo. Evil is the privation of good. It's not real either, in that sense. The Rambo seems to be saying. But he's struggling trying to solve why is there suffering in the world? Why is there evil in the world? And that's what he says about it. The Rav, Rabbi Salavechik, is saying that that doesn't solve anything e either. Our world view, he will say, will lead us to the conclusion that because we have only a fragmented, partial view of the world, therefore one can never really fully understand the problem. We should not attempt to think about it. We should, never, we should not even attempt to approximate a response to it. We can never explain it. We, it is intrinsically impossible for one with finite vision to encompass both the historical as well as theological totality of evil. So we cannot understand it. Answer. He's saying there's no answer. Sure. We cannot understand the answer. Not that there is no answer. We, seeing a virtual um, mm. slice of reality, cannot fully understand the answer to the point. In other words, evil is a problem within creation, I would say. 
in a sense, but I would say. Now, pro- it was a problem within creation, and it began with, it began with creation, and extends all the way to the end of creation, which is, let's say, four or five billion years, or whatever number we want to use, then one has to encompass the totality of that picture to see, to understand what's there. We cannot understand, with our fragmented vision of reality, what the all, what the all-encompassing answer to evil actually is. Are you happy with now, that answer? Well, I didn't get to the whole point yet, but no, I would say I'm not really happy with it. What I am happy with is the notion, A, that it's intrinsically impossible to solve, and the question has to be, as I've tried to do, can we take the manifestation of evil and invent, if you're given, no matter how illogical you're going to be, could you explain one child suffering? Could you think of something? Uh, evil, uh, a world without evil, you wouldn't appreciate the good. Uh, okay. If everything was good, uh, everybody would be uh, Hashem's puppets, and uh, you have to give them the freedom to be good or bad, to be able to... Uh, to be able to... To keep on going. I, I need 50 or 60 premises like that, Why? and would that help me with the problem of evil? Free will is one issue. Uh, give me uh, a love how about another issue. You give me 50 or 60 premises, will that solve the Holocaust? That's the question that one has to, to really raise. For one to work through this problem systematically and see that I have all these premises, free will, or love how about. The child's not really suffering. I mean, again, I can say something as, as absurd as, we halakhal are allowed to fish. We take a throw a hook in, Catch the fish, take it out, and we eat it. No shechita. So you can't really rationalize the effect that uh, evil has on the people. It's affecting. Couple of people. Can rationalize uh, that. I would say that you know. Uh, cannot really rationalize the effect that evil is having on people. Not on the people that it can rationalize. I'm talking about those people. Right. Think about a person who exposes evil. Okay. Is it possible that let's say a Hasidic rabbi who went through evil saw this as purifying? No problem. This is not evil. That's what he says it's not evil to me. He's being, his skin is being torn. And he says, no, this is wonderful. Maybe it's is that a, possib- is that a possibility? Yeah. Exactly. It's close to Hashem. And he's saying this is purifying, it's cathartic, it's appropriate, it's fine, it's wonderful. Now, could I call that evil? No. But Jews throughout their history, the Holocaust is an example, but throughout their history they've been persecuted and killed. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, good. But, uh, but are gone. Yeah. That's true. But it, again, but I could solve that because they chose to be gone. They chose to ascend. They chose to intermarry. Anybody who doesn't experience evil himself in that way <coughs> would be... But you're justifying all evil for the last... I'm, I'm, ju- I'm trying to figure out a way. Is there any way... You're right. Is there any way that one can ultimately, with all the premises, justify evil? <laughs> In the sense that we have said that the the e or the fish does not feel pain. Hence, the halacha says you have to do shechita. We are very compassionate people. The halacha called masav. We we want so much. In, one of the symbols for Ben Noach is don't be cruel to animals. It's an incredible religion we have over here. Maybe that uh, that oh, one second. Thousands of years ago, we said seven most important principles in the world. Seven: don't don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't kill, right? Justice. All of these things we said, right? All of these things. One of them is, don't be cruel to animals. That's an amazingly sensitive statement. And yet, why do we allow fishing? With a very not such nice thing, take a hook, throw it in, catch the fish, pull it out, fry it, eat it. That seems to be horrifying. The, the, the answer is, the halakha says that fish are such a pre, or halakha believe, are such a pre-state of pain, the, neuro- the neurology is not developed, uh, developed sufficiently, they don't feel pain. They don't care. Now, is that evil? No, they don't care. So what about if every manifestation that we think is evil, right, that, that the second that that person starts to experience pain, let's say Hashem, a righteous person, the second that he gets into the, the, the first fire, gets to burn his little uh, singe's hair, that is transformed into pleasure. Right? And we, what we view as pain, from this point of view is what? Pleasure. Now, I'm not, saying this is, I'm not saying I believe in all this. I'm saying this. Can one ultimately justify all this kind of evil? Wait, right you're saying, one can. What, 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 what? You're saying justify as the destiny of those who, are, who it's inflicted no. on, right? You're not saying justify, not justify the fact that, you know, a criminal is evil, but just say, how do you justify no, the, the fact criminals. that people have to suffer right. from him? Talking, yeah, exactly. Oh. Right. So now, is that, I don't know, I, I may be able to justify evil in this way, but it's silly. Ultimately, you're right. I can do that by making all kinds of hypotheses. Nobody's feeling pain. It's all pleasure. I'm sorry? It, it's, it's, yeah, it's silly. I can justify anything that way. 
I guess that's why that fellow met on the moon. You don't see it because you're not looking at the moon in the right way because they're on the other side. Whatever comes this way, they're on the other side. It's not rational. So one can really philosophically justify ultimately evil if one tries with enough premises to do so, but it's not really dealing with the issue in its black and white intensity. So when someone else says, we're not going to try to justify all these crazy premises that you're going to have. Really, you can. Again, what I tries to do so. He doesn't say that over here. You can say, oh, the Holocaust was wonderful. Why? Because it purged Jewish people, because they all want to love Haba. And there are ten different reasons why you could say the Holocaust was wonderful. He's saying that's perverse. He's not going to take the easy way out. All the Lam Habas, and then all the suffered, and they all, what about a two and a half year old child, the bottom of man, God forbid, dies? What do we say? Oh, they were in a formal existence, then they needed two and a half years to perfect themselves, now they're perfect, they go straight to Allah. So be happy, don't mourn. He's not going to say all of that. One can, in fact, justify evil all the way through, but he's not going to say that. But people need an answer. He's not going to, he does not use religion to. Pacify. pacify the soul. That's correct. The best answer you're right that a rabbi who is a clergyman can give to someone who experiences evils that Hashem wanted us. It's wonderful. It's for the good. It's purifying. This kid straight on back. What are you crying about? Yeah, yeah, right, we have to be better because we right. aren't so good. Right. Or that's say because we were bad. Well, that's the worst answer. Who well, this kid died because I was bad? That's, that's sick. I don't know. That's the worst. And if I were to push now, I would say that that's, that, that's justice. To the contrary, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. No, don't even say that. Kill to the contrary, me. yeah, kill me, exactly. <laughs> or to say that Hashem is just testing you. Now, again, that's one of the answers. But Hashem tests his righteous, you're righteous, don't cry, don't accept it. Then you're righteous. No, I won't go from that by saying, I don't want to be righteous. I'll go out and sin tomorrow, save my children. Who would, would not do that? Let me go to the Hanel Shabbat so I don't have to, God forbid, that I don't attempt God to test me. I want to be a regular, normal, evil guy, and my kids will live. That's, what, that's, the, that's my reaction to that answer. So I'm not going to go so far with that what I think is, is perverse. No. I think the most emotionally satisfying answer, if one can accept it, is Hashem did this for some wonderful good. Okay. Gizrat HaMakor, accept it, and it's a good. Now, if one can accept that, the person feels better in his heart. It's Hashem's will, the child is happy, the child is in Olam Haba, and everything's okay. But that is the most satisfying. But it, is it not? It's different when it happens by accident, and it's different when, when the soldier. They would say there's no accident. It's when real. the soldier's taking the child away from the mother, and the soldier yeah. and the baby's crying. It's not an accident. Mommy, mommy, before she dies. Hashem, they, that approach, as David will tell you, well, is Hashem has control over everything, manipulating, uh, manipulating, doing everything. Correct. Evil. Correct. For some higher reason. But he's not going to answer this way. He's, he's not going to use religion to pacify. He's not known as a king. We're not worried about people. Where's that religion and truth? Religion, truth? religion, philosophical truth. He's not interested in people. Bottom line. Uh, bring Bottom the example line. of Yaakov, that he was, that's the first real manifestation of pain that is written in the Quran. Like the struggle, the struggle, the struggle of Yaakov. Struggle. But it's a life process. Where he actually get that quote unquote injury. Yeah. And yeah, come to my okay, yeah. now I don't think he's heart felt pain but in uh, it's not psychological. Right. But uh, in, in this case it was physical pain also. And at the end what become Yasar Ev. You be the right Sar Ev. Yasar right. Ev. So right. maybe we sh- we should look at it from this point of view. When there is a physical and a psychological you, yeah. uh pain uh, and, and suffering, at the end, if you look at it over history, you become oh. far end. Oh, could be. Okay, that's one. If we see the end of history, that could be what he, that's the total vision. The total vision. That, that could be. We overcome all these... But again, he's not uh, going to tell you that. Those are forces. forces. Yes, and we still, because after... How many thousands of years we still survive? Yes. Okay, all that may and, be. And but he's not going to answer all that. You, everybody has a need to justify it, to rationalize it. He's not going to make it, make it easy for you. He's not going to say, this is God's will and it's okay and it's fine because the guy's arm is burning off and say, no, don't worry about it. His arm's going straight to the He's going to say, I don't know. He's going to say, I don't know. And he believes... He's going to say, I don't know. He, well, he's going to say, this is the real Jewish answer. I don't know. It's utterly incredible that he denies, as I mentioned last week, biblically speaking, there's a very wonderful book called Bayat HaGemul Batanach, The Problem of Evil in Tanakh. That's one. You could also write a book on Bayat HaGemul Batalmud, The Talmud, Masech Kedushim, 
that Lamina Mubed is one example of that. Masech Shabbat is another example of that. But there are many places which try to will solve the problem with premises. Olam Haba, it's not really so bad, that's a trouble. Why? Well, perhaps because the Talmudic era was one of uh, untold suffering for the Jewish people. Talking about Kuchva Revolt, talking about Chorban Ben Amitash, about horrible situations. And when people are suffering in that area, you're right, they need an answer. So therefore the answer is, the man's door is being carried out to be raped and three times and to be burnt and everything else, you tell him, don't worry about it. Because it's evil, that's what it really is. You can't answer free will or that. Why not? Because that person is suffering. But what's the best answer? It's Hashem's will to go straight to heaven. And it's okay. Maybe that's the best emotional answer. I respect the emotional answer. Okay. But who is not going to do that? Exactly. 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 Not, exactly. Not also it's psychologically true, though not theologically true. But didn't, like, if you say something like that, didn't they used to sacrifice the people? Not at that period of time. No, no, what I was doing. saying a thousand years earlier. They used to sacrifice yeah, people. They said the pain that she's suffering now, and the giving up of her life will send her, her soul to... Well, the Jews didn't do that. The pagans did that. The pagans did that. But pagans didn't do, sort pagans of, didn't, I don't oh, recall ever reading where pagans would answer theologically the issue. To the contrary, they would say, you're propitiating the deity. The gods will now be happy with this beautiful young virgin. virgin. Yeah. And she goes up, and now the, cl- the crops will be blessed. They didn't worry about her pain. Well, the parent did it. Look, I have to give back to God. God gave me, you know, uh, wonderful crops. All right, I have to give back to God. I take, I give back. Julian tried to purge that idea. So that would not be relevant to him. So therefore, Rabbi Sarah is saying that you cannot solve the problem. Now, you're right. The pain is much more intense when you think, I don't know why this happened. This great, horrible tragedy happened. The pain is that much more intense. But his point over here is, what do I do now? He's, he's really saying over here that all those answers are pseudo-answers. It's all great and may be true, but it's not going to really do help you. What will help you? He says there are two modes of response. We ended up last week. There are two modes of response that are possible. One is called Goral, one is called Yehud. Goral means fate, Yehud means destiny. Fate means that I'm going to endure the suffering, I'm going to philosophize with it, I'm going to struggle with it, I'm going to be <coughs> overwhelmed w- by it. Yehud means destiny. Destiny means that I'm going to actively and creatively attack the evil, I'm going to grow by virtue of the evil, <coughs> I'm going to do, try to do something positive and meaningful despite the evil. I'm not going to ever understand it. This point over here is, Sadiq Allah, there's evil in the world. Can I explain it? No. Can I can I intellectualize it away? No. Can I create 25 premises? No. What do I do with it? Halakha will tell you, simply, creatively use that evil to perfect yourself, to perfect the world, to grow from it without understanding it. Well, Rabbi, has, doesn't this um, undermine a lot of concepts we have about that if you're bad, if you are bad, Hashem punishes you, but if you repent, then Hashem will be good to you, but then here they all were. I mean, and it doesn't have, you don't have to... He's not, no, no, are you saying that? To suffer, but it, it affects you how you the individual, your right. life. The individual, right. Well, whether we, we will not conclude that every manifestation of supposed evil is a result of badness. We're not going to say that. We're not going to say that because I'm suffering, there's no cause of the We're not going to say because I'm suffering before I was bad. That's what your friends try to tell them. You are bad, you are suffering, therefore you are bad. No, it wasn't bad. And the end result of Eyob is that it's Hashem says to Eyob, you're right and they're wrong. You do not, we know that this is all true because we know, the, we know behind the scenes that in Eyob, what happened to Eyob? He was innocent. He was happy. He was joyous. What did I do wrong? From one point of view, we're reading in one way. So we don't conclude that because they're suffering, therefore you did evil. Now that is a factor in the entire equation. Certainly there is a doctrine of Sakharba Onesh in Torah, which it's means written, collectively right. or individually that if I do sin, I'm going to pay a price. I'm sorry? If you took the Ra, I'll be punished? Sure, that is, a, you're correct, is, absolutely, but does that okay. mean, I mean it's correct, straight. but does that mean that every single manifestation of evil is a result of sin? But if you it's don't want to run, it's not a mathematical maybe in, that, maybe in that sense, but it's not a mathematical equation. One, that two. might be true some of the time. If but you but you not to to that, to that is uh, only one slice, it's one factor. Sometimes that's true. When a Nazi is put to death, that's because he sinned. 
He said, why me? Well, God, why me? Because you're evil, that's all, that's all the story. He said when someone's evil, they get punished. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, it's not... That question is true. That question is true. But not the all of reality. Why? Right. That's because we see that it's not true. It's a complete sentence. But therefore, every, 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 every single idea is true. That's the five, two and a half year old dying. I, 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 but that's... That's what I'm Walking away and logically, not logic. uh, la- logically manipulating the situation with other instances, but the the sentence here is complete and and. It's not true for every single situation. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Can I be Akira? Erase the sentence. I'm not erasing it. I'm qualifying it. Put a put a. I'm qualifying it. There are many issues that I qualify. There are many issues. I'm qualifying. That's true of this particular issue, not of all issues. That's one fact. That's the evil is the result of... Right. Uh, the sentence says, if you are bad, you are evil. It doesn't say if you are not evil. It doesn't say if you are not evil. It doesn't say if you are not... In other words, we get rewarded? Yeah. It says if you are evil, you are evil. Right. But also it says, no, if you are good, sometimes you never still get punished. If you are good, Okay, good. If you are good, you get rewarded. But it does not does it tell us ever that if you are good, you I still may punish you. Never. That would make sense. So that happens. Yeah, that's the story of you. That's what it says. Wait, wait, wait. So the ultimate answer we have to understand over here, I would say, is that does the system work such that yes, mita below you should be? The phrase it this way. Is there suffering without sin? good, there is. Is all suffering evil? No. Suffering could be cathartic. Suffering could make you grow. Suffering could make you into a different kind of a person. Suffering can give you a better perspective on life. Ah, so that's taking one angle. That's, what, that's another angle. What about the so angle? So let's not, we have to separate the two terms between evil angle. and suffering. It's a big angle. It's very important. So the Gemara is a machloket and this issue. The, the Havamin and the, the premise of the Gemara is Ein mita belo yisurim. Ein mita belo chet ein yisurim belo avon. If you, if you have a person dies, a person suffers, he sinned. We ultimately c- conclude that many people will die without sin and suffer without having done anything wrong. But another big angle could be Yolam Haba. Maybe you're going That's to... That's another premise. The, the way now goes beyond what we see. Okay, so now he's Maybe you're going to suffer now. Okay, it doesn't mean anything compared to what the pleasure and the reward you're going to get in Yolam Haba. So Correct. Go to the next one. But, see, again, we all agree, one second, let's go with one more point. We all agree that if either person not suffers, not that's no answer. problem. Right? 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 That's number one. And we also agree that if the, the right person gets rewarded, no problem with that either. Right. It's very nice, that these two systems needs to work. The problem is that when a right person suffers, right? Now, the question over here is, this is why it's a complicated problem. Let's say he suffered as a result of somebody else's free will. Okay, that's part of the system. That's not the Akiva. Righteous man chose good his whole entire life, now he's suffering. What's the answer? The answer is that he is the recipient of somebody else's free will chosen evil. Is that part of the world? Now, Rabbi Akiva would say, yes, that's part of the world. I accept it. Because that is the world. The world is that that manifestation of evil directed at me, I have to accept because that means free will. If there's no free will, there's no world. We're all robots. It's another factor over here. So we, have, so we have a lot of different things in this whole entire picture. But his bottom line, again, will be but there is evil in the world. There are righteous people who suffer in the world. What, am I going to understand it? No. What should I do about it? That's his practical focus. What does halakha teach me to do? Halakha, underline. What does halakha teach me to do when I am confronted with evil? It's the issue. When somebody lost his entire family in the Holocaust, what does he do about it? Does he wallow in his misery, ask the question, why me, why me, why me, and become so philosophically overwhelmed by it that he cannot function any longer, as Primo Levi, who we discussed and ultimately committed suicide because he looked, Primo Levi, who wrote a number of books on, on the Holocaust, he was a chemist in, I think it was, um, I think it was Germany, yeah, and who ultimately committed suicide. Well, three years ago. Why? Because I, he couldn't deal with the reality. He never assimilated that reality, could not creatively deal with it, therefore he ended up ending his own life. Is that the right Jewish answer to that? The answer is no. But so saying that is the fatalistic person. It happened. I can't control it. I am subject to these forces. I can, I'm immobilized by my questions, by my intellect, intellectualizing. I can go nowhere. On the other hand, there are many people who went through that experience of the horror of the Holocaust, 
I did not submit passively and hopelessly to the evil that engulfed them. Rather, they rose up and took a number of steps forward and they used the suffering to refine themselves, to exalt themselves, to increase sensitivity to other people's suffering and they ended up destroying people. Is that, does that justify the evil? No, we're not going to answer the problem. That's what we said to you from the very beginning. Just accept it and create a good one. And have faith in the future. Right, right, right. Don't stop yeah. growing. Right. Don't stop yeah. growing. But the fact that you're growing is not going to prevent it from happening, from happening to you. No, you can't. It doesn't happen. It happen again. Right. Correct. It will happen again. But that's how we deal with it. So there's really no point. What's that? That's the wrong page. Goodbye. Right. There, there is a point. There is the point. The point, the point is to create a. Let me just read. Be the point is to try again, try to be older and continue to, uh, to look. Exactly, right. To the good, to the good at one time. To become a constructive individual. You know, well, once you live, I mean, in other words, you live, look, not to Let's just see it in his words. We've discussed so far, the first paragraph was Siddiq Vidalo, the evil to the righteous person. Second, he said, Judaism is able to provide a approach to this problem. Not a solution. We're not going to answer the problem. We'll share God no answer. We'll share no answer. I will know. There's no answer to this issue. It's, in, it's a philosophically impossible to solve is the way that he's approaching this issue. The Talmud, in fact, does give all kinds of answers to it. The Torah does not. Tanakh does not. The Bible does not. They remain with a question. Talmud has an intellectualized, rationalized answer. In general, Talmud, biblical thinking is more existential. It's more alive, it's more open, it's more passionate, it's more l- living, Talmudic answers are more analytical, with a lot of premises. It's more structured, and therefore they have a lot of, they solve the problem of evil. Biblical does not. He's going back to the Bible by quoting him, Yahweh, Yishayah, and all these people who say that we cannot solve the problem of evil. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, nobody solves it anything. No. What do you mean? No. He couldn't solve it. Did not solve it. He did not even know it. He doesn't have any answers. He says, God, tell me what the answer is. I can't tell you the answer. Too bad. So at that point, that, that was the this last point where he couldn't solve it. Yeah, no point. He asked the question in Shemot Lamed Gimel. What are your ways? Why is it evil in the world? Right. What's the story? Moshe asked the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Answer. Man cannot comprehend the, the entire most comprehensive view of reality and still be human. To get this infinite view of humanity, infinite view of the world, you have to be divine. You can't understand it. So Moshe did not, nobody will understand it. Despite all the 25 different premises you want, nothing can make it work. What do I do then? His answer is, should one be Yehud or Goral? Yehud, faint, you're a leaf on the sea that just gets thrown around and you can't control, you can't do, you're just a passive subject. Or can you be a Isha Yehud? Isha Yehud means the destiny to take whatever it is that I have, whatever deck of cards, is, is dealt to me and simply grow creatively from this experience. Paragraph Vav, page 160. Hayadut Indi realistic. Judaism with its realistic approach, the Adam to man, Umama Dobitucha Mitziut, and his station in reality, Hedina, understood. Kiara Loni Tane Tishtush Uchitui. Evil was not given to erase away, to ignore, and to cover up. All of the attempt to lessen the value of the contradiction and the conflict that is in existence will not bring a person there to 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 kind of a soul satisfying answer. Peace. Sorry? Soul peace. peace. To soul peace. You won't get peace by all of your attempt to wipe away evil. Evil is realistic. It's real. It's there. The lonely death if you said has sword, has existential story. And you will not <clears throat> come with all your thinking to a grasping of the secret of existence. Evil is part of existence. You cannot wish it away. God has created evil. Or at least it's there. It's part of creation. It's an intrinsic part of creation. Even at the end of Eeyore, <clears throat> you think of Eeyore, ultimately, what do we see? We see that it comes back to creation. Evil is part of creation. You may even argue evil had to be part of creation, not because of free will, which is one issue about evil, but the evil is there for what? For us to overcome it. Our quality as people 
is determined by our approach to evil. Wow. Meaning, if we see cancer, what should we do? Should we buy a nice new $40,000 car or should we try to cure cancer? That's a challenge that we have on a daily basis. Should we buy a $400 suit or should we give $200 to a suit and $200 to cancer? There's a, that's evil. Cancer is evil. So one may argue, let's say this is what he says, but one may argue that our quality of you as human beings is dependent upon seeing evil in the world and overcoming. There's a guy who starved to death right this second. Right this second, guy starving to death in uh, Bangladesh. What should I do about it? Should I eat an extra bagel, have a, a two donuts, or should I put the food on the side and tell the guy, this bagel sent to, to Bangladesh? Should I write a letter to the Congress? Now, we don't see this as well, but we do see in terms of a homeless in Manhattan, you look, look in Manhattan, you see a homeless guy, what do I do? Well, go out and buy my... Uh, my uh, Mont Blanc pen for two hundred dollars, or do I buy a hundred dollar pen and give him a candy bar? What should we do? That's a challenge that one has. There's evil in the world. We agree. What should I do with it? Not you say should I philosophize so the guy drops dead, or should I do something about it? That's the question. Sorry. Right? Uh? Well, what about the, the let's say a child is born in uh, India or whatever, uh, or a family where there's no food, and the child is born and then dies a year later? starvation. Okay. Now, I could, you could say, well, you're asking us how we should deal with evil, you know, we should be spending... Perhaps evil is part of creation. But how does the child or the person who's born into that situation has no control over... Well, oh, that's child, right. 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 How does a person from that point of view... Point of view right, that's the evil, sure. ...from that point of view uh, appreciate what you're saying. Because that person can right. help another the person. Child. Correct, you're absolutely right. That's right. That's the evil from that point of view. What? You're right. That's evil from that point of view and, and it's they will A, the reality they well. will suffer as a result of our neglect. Right. That's so free will. We have free will to not give that child a baby. They will, they will suffer. Well, that's, that is true because that's all the problem of evil. Okay, but let's so say now, let's say if your, let's say your audience now is not us, where we can have an effect over evil and we could, you know, spend the money on buying food for poor people, let's say your audience now is these children or these people who are in totally no control of Okay, that's what I mentioned. The answer and there would be is to, really is to, is to try people. and create, his point is, you're right, they're the recipients of evil, right? right. So we're, I'm and saying, that, from our perspective, it's a challenge. From their perspective, what do I tell them? From our perspective, it's easy. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a challenge. I don't know if it's so easy, but it's no, a challenge. it's easy because uh-huh. we have a choice. Okay, you're right. Well, we may suffer other forms of evil. We may have the riches and wealth to solve the problem, yeah. and this is a divine gift. This is what I'll say in a few moments. And, what, and we decide to in, indulge in our most fantastic fantasies of wealth. Right. The guys for $100 million, like, you know, that, that have a gold-plated uh, 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 car. <laughs> Okay, so in that situation, then God may say, hey, I gave you this gift of life, right. gift of wealth, and you didn't use it to, to really right. stop that evil. Right. So therefore, I'll take it away from you. Now, you will be the recipient of evil. Not of evil, but of suffering. Let's, let's call yeah, it suffering. Yeah, but then you said sometimes people don't... Uh, Associate it to? Right, I mean, right. I mean, sometimes that people could be. don't, don't uh, get punished for what they didn't do. We don't know. We don't know the whole picture. Right. right. So okay, we don't now, know. Now so your audience is this. Right, so now in this situation, I will tell them what he's telling them. We, we can't solve this issue while you're suffering. Okay. There's a connection between what's going on there and here, not doing what we're but let's try to think creatively and actively and try to shape our environment. How can we do it? Not to the one year old, obviously, but to the 50 year old man or 30 year old woman, what do we do now? The child dies, okay. What should we do now? You're assuming that these people are uh, conscious enough to think that they're, they're so hungry. They're not even paying attention. Okay, that could be. Then I have no hope. Then it's uh, then I throw the ball back into our court. Let's try and solve their lot in life. Judaism teaches, Judaism teaches that human life is very valuable, infinitely precious. Let's try to improve the world. That's our function, to cool life of which day. That's our ultimate goal as Jews, to mend the world, to fix the world. That's what we have to do. But there's two different answers. You're right, two different messages. His message over here is to those victims of evil. What should we do? I mean, we'll talk about the the, uh, the rich, the fat cow Jew in the 1950s who only cared about going to Florida to his kind of an idiot. When he went to 1955, And he's saying, is that what you should be doing with your money? He's very tough. He's saying, instead of, his ultimate point in this essay is, look, we just went through the Holocaust. What should we do about it now? Should we philosophize about it? Should we try to solve the problem? You won't. 
You won't do it. What should you do about it? You should try to creatively respond to the evil by accepting it as God's will. Okay? And to that degree, there is your point before, namely that it does emanate ultimately from Hashem. Whatever happened in, in some sense. Accept that. In the Holocaust. Of course. Correct. They did not. Some did not. Family was some did not. But what's the response? What's your choice? No, you, if you say all this, if God, if God, if God did this, a lot of people don't believe in God because He did this. I'm saying that they can't believe that God. God. That's all good. I'm that's fatalistic. Right. So now, right. now where you at? But that's not well, the end of the day. That's what you will say to Okay, that You happens. believe in God, but you lose faith in God. Okay, good. So the other side, he would say to you, look, I cannot solve this problem if you, it cannot be solved. Nothing that I can say can make you feel better. But what happened, this is, this is, uh, we, we, we've experienced this evil, whether it's a result of free will or whatever, let's call it free will, the Nazis decided to exterminate us, they did so. Now what should we do? What are we doing here? Yeah, well, we should try and better ourselves. So instead yeah, of believing in God, we through. should rebuild our homes. Yeah, of course. Right. But we're no. saying, but they all think that. But they, that's the point. He's well, specifically true. telling the Jewish community, right, let's go to Israel now, let's different. rebuild our land. Okay, but they did it, but w- when it came to, to God, most of them refrained from... Yeah, well, some did, some did. Okay. Some did, some did. They, 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 would, they would believe in it, move forward in their lives, all right, try to justify it any way they could, and right. just, you know, put God on the side. Some did that, some did. Of right. course, like Eli Wiesel, of course, I'm watching the Holocaust as an unbeliever, because he could not believe in a God that did what he did. But ten years later, he he believes in God. He came to a belief in God, not understanding it. But A, there was a need to believe in God, because you can't believe in mankind, because mankind sat back and left when all this happened. Nobody helped anybody. So I I have a need, A, there's a need for a belief in God. But also also there's some kind of perspective that he had. He he purged himself. Through his writing, he was able to sanctify life. And therefore, at this point, he is. He, he sees beyond the Holocaust. At one point in his life, Holocaust was the whole entire sum of his existence. But then he started believing in life again. He got married when he was quite old, when he was in 58, no, 63 or something. Got married, had a child, now there's life. But now there's a miracle of life. So now I have the miracle of life against the, the curse of death. Now, what do I do now? So once you have to see the miracle of life, that may give you some... I don't understand this issue. I'm not going to ever understand it. So that's his point. So now that's in the miracle of life, let me go ahead. Let me choose to believe in life rather than believe in death. What should be my motto in life? Death or life? I can't, I'm not going to kill myself, so I'm going to live or die. What should I do? So he's going to choose to believe in God. He chooses. It's the will to believe. I choose. Despite this, or maybe because of this, I have to believe in God now. And he may come to the point that, again, the Holocaust is the least of the problem of evil because that really is human will. Human will is such that Nazis could choose to shoot a, a three-year-old. However, we get that's free will. Whatever God did, that's free will. What do I do now? That's free will. So that we understand. That's, that's not really the, the precise problem of evil. There's other problems of evil which are much worse than that. The fact that a uh, Nazi decides to shoot a kid, that's free will. That's easy. Does anyone have a problem with that? that a person will come here to you, still on the side, and get you in the leg. His free will to get you in the leg. That's the easy problem of evil. You're suffering. You're you do anything wrong. To, you can do anything wrong. What should I do now? Should I go to the hospital and get my leg fixed up? Or should I wonder why you do it? Why you do it? He chose to do it. You were the superior of his evil. Now you go ahead and deal with it creatively. That's what he's saying. Okay. Let me just go on a little bit more. So he says, All the philosophers, philosophers will not give you peace of soul. Will you dare to accept that soul? And you won't understand reality. Hara hu of that. Evil is a fact of life. She ain't not You can't deny it. Yes, no, ra. There is evil in the world. Yes, no, sevil. There is suffering in the world. Yes, nam, yisure, sheol, tofet ba'olam. There is the afflictions of hell in this world. Mishra tzela at otas. Well, he wants to fool himself by ignoring it. It's not bad. Just, just ignoring the akira shmavia of the fractured nature of existence that we suffer. If you want to ignore it, romantizia and romantically romanticizing life of mankind. Same life is wonderful, it's gentle, it's it's idyllic. Let's say one would approach life in this way and ignore evil, and a shote. This person is a fool. The Jose has a dreamer of dreams. It's impossible to overcome the evil monster of Ra, of evil. 
you cannot overcome the monster evil philosophically and speculatively. Lachen, therefore, Hechri Ayadut, Judaism decree, Ki Adam HaShakua B'Ma'am Kegarot Kefu'ah, that a man, a human being, who is mired in the depths of fatalistic, of frozen fatalism, Kefu'ah, frozen fatalism, Nashav, for naught, Yevakesh, he will seek out Pitron, the answer, Ba'ya, to the problem of evil, in the framework of speculative philosophical thinking. Impossible. He will not know himself, and he will never find an answer to the problem of evil. You can't understand it. But by, of course, Yes, life is good. Torah says, Tov Me'od. Life says, Torah says that life is wonderful. I'm a TV, it's true, life is good. He does not contradict the fact that life is good. Ulam, however, in the Amur, in the Mechanat, Atzata. This is telling us that life is good, from the perspective of a glance. Ha'ed so featured how it said. Life is ultimately good from the perspective of the infinite perspective of the Yotzeh, of God. Ultimately, this whole world is good. Ultimately, in the infinite perspective of Hashem, life is good. It's a positive issue. It's good. I think Buddhism is for someone, no? No. He's saying, he's saying there's a meaning to the end. He's saying there's no bad. Yeah. Ultimately. Ultimately, life is good. Uh, in other words, let's say um, I, I am suffering and you'll keep poor by the fact that I'm not eating. I really am suffering. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm suffering. But there's a good, is there a good to that? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm spiritualized. I'm, cath- I'm cathartized. I am pure because of the result of my suffering. Am I not? So, in the ultimate perspective of what I learn, life is good. But in, in the little byways of the way the world works till we get to an infinite perspective there's evil well life is good but it just has bad experiences in it so I mean there's all <coughs> the good force okay, right, well, the right. ultimate it's bottom good. line is going to be that all the suffering was for good right? was to get you on the path of good he's not going to say it's that it's all a master plan and it's all he said it is a master plan and it all fits course. in it all will fit into the mosaic of the world from the infinite perspective it, it might not be a good world. world I'm sorry it will be a good world right Maybe it's not plan, but you can impose your own plan in a way on it. You can be the force for good. And, that's, you know, that's part of it. Correct. Is. Good. But you should be the force for good in the world. That's part of this whole issue. Part of the issue is that there is going to be free will chosen evil. But is, uh, is, uh, is this saying that the, the Holocaust is in the plan? To get in the, the plan, good? In the plan to the extent that e- that evil was chosen by the Nazis. That's part of the goodness of the plan. In other words, it's part of the plan to end up good. Yeah. But no, well, not exactly that. It was a predetermined. But part of the goodness of the plan is free will. They chose to do evil. Right. Well, in that case, yes. So, so, so because of it was, it was to make this whole plan good, you have to have free will. In the ultimate sense, if you have no free will. What do you have? Do you have a good? You have a better world. This is, of course, the philosophical question. <coughs> what you want as a better world? Or with no free will, all people choosing good. Is that a better world? Or is a better world, a good world, where people have free will, some of whom choose good, but some of whom choose evil. And those who choose good, they suffer because the evil chose the others. What's the better world? You have to mention the world when there's both. You have to mention the world what, the, what? In other words, like I said, which before, world do you want? Before, before, if there was no evil, you wouldn't appreciate the good. Uh, it's just like the no headache. You'd be at a cash register asking for money. If it was, I mean, you know, headache and, and, and the headache. If you would have a headache, there's no how good it feels without a headache. That's right? true. Everybody was true. That's true. You need the headache first. Okay, so that's another factor in this whole equation. Of course, you're right. That the presence of some degree of evil does make us appreciate good and work towards good and alleviate suffering. But you're speaking so, part of, so that's what I meant before by saying that evil was you know, part of the divine plan. Some degree of evil. Maybe we intensified it. So I wouldn't say that it's great to have Hitler's Holocaust in order to teach me about human life. That was a terrible failing of that. Right, but exactly. You can't stop. But that's part, so there's the overall picture, when, when we were to see the overall picture of the world, we'll say that even though there were these little barbers of evil that were massive and horrible, that they're explainable. How so? That A, whether it's free will, whether it's to appreciate the good, in other words, maybe I'll stub my toe. That's part of the evil of the creation, we have to appreciate wholeness. I mean, people have told me that everyone has a goldstone, appreciates what 
the, the beauty of going to the bathroom is to put it in a kind of uh, rose context. That unless you unless you have that stone and don't know what it means, the pain that you experience, then you appreciate. Wow, Marabu Masay Hashem. Then you say Hashem Yatsar with Kavana, because then you understand what it means to to have a healthy body, functioning commonly in the appropriate way. Right. I I I I I find the swinging from uh, one one argument. whole entire picture. One of the factors is free will. One of the factors is that sometimes suffering is there to be overcome, if it's possible to overcome it. For some. And the person that's born ill and born without any choice in the matter, it is definitely relative, is, is that I would say, let's do the best that we can, and ultimately God will rectify the wrong in some fashion, form, which we don't understand. Again, this is not meant to explain anything. Looking for the purpose of evil in the context of the whole classic of history. I know, but then somewhere I heard, I don't know where, I mean, uh, that uh, everybody should perceive that the world was uh, made for them. Right? Let me do this. No, it does. It's true, but... No, I'll tell you why, because if a person is born in this terrible condition... Well, I agree. I don't know how you... That statement is out of... You're right. You don't have... That's something you don't get across. It's not a true statement for everybody. Quran and Rashmili is the statement of somebody who's healthy, wonderful, can make. It doesn't apply, of course, to everybody. Not every rabbinic statement applies to every single situation, every single point of life. Right? So that doesn't so apply to this. Okay. Now let's just go to the steps. One second. Therefore, Judaism says that man who is frozen in his in his fatalism will, will fail to find a philosophically satisfying answer. If you think you have the answer, you know you're on the wrong track. There is no ultimate answer to the problem of evil, is what he's saying. You don't understand the problem. Then the ultimate answer could be Yeah, in a certain sense. Yes and no. Yes and no. He doesn't, he doesn't say that. Hold on. Okay. You know, I'm saying, well, fine. But thank you, the fashion of Torah, the Torah tells us that the world is good. It's true. But this is only good from the infinite perspective of the Creator. Because from the fragmented perspective of man who is finite, in a term of watch, but sira he does not see, we do not see goodness, absolute goodness in the world. We don't see it. Conflict, contradiction, the good the the contradiction and the conflict bullet comes out. They are not its possible tool. And it's not even overwhelmed by the tool, by nullification. In other words, the evil is so stark, the good, the conflict and contradiction is so stark the world takes a little bit and it's overwhelmed by it. it's mostly good. Ram says the world is mostly good, so any little bit of evil that you find, a little bit of evil, don't worry about it. No, he's saying the opposite. The evil seems to predominate. And the good will let you to be not its past by the tool. It's not nullified by the good. No, the evil is there. You're experiencing it. That kid in India does know the world only as an evil place. There is evil in the world that is not given over to understanding and explanation. Yes, that which happens to Hitler is good. That's not evil in the world. That's understandable. The man is, is hung, good story. That's not evil in the world. But there is a certain kind of evil in the world that's not going to be explained. Only a perspective of the world in its entirety can give a person a glance to the essence of evil. You need totality. You need creation. You need end. You need the whole entire perspective to understand evil. About calls a man, but as long as just a kind of man, as long as man is mitzumsenet, is limited, umesuresen, and is flawed, and huro e erakiti, and when the young sees little uh, slices that are not cosmic in the in the drama, but they're not in a dramatic cosmo cosmic vision, he always sees a little bit of the reality, not the whole entire picture. So he would be against giving it the 25 reasons that we would give to try to rationalize it? Right. Absolutely. That's not going to give you any answers whatsoever. 
Correct. Another question. That's just going to make you feel better, but there's no truth in it. No, you're finding the question. Uh, he says, he's, that, that's, that's if there's no truth in it, he's saying that's not going to make you feel better. He's saying that that's not going to solve the problem. Because it's right. a form of evil that you can't Well, at some point, it'll be a form that you cannot explain. Yeah, okay, good. Although, again, 25 days could solve every problem, but it's really going to ultimately not solve the problem. It's on the given column. Right. Okay. And in, in, a, in a historical plan for the world, you cannot penetrate to the secrets of evil and suffering. What is it like? It's like a person who sees a curtain which is a finely tuned, um, woven kind of creation, which from the backside looks like a mass of all st- uh, strings coming out and all the loose ends of the of the woven tapestry coming out, when you turn it over, which is the cosmic view of the world, it all makes sense. Ultimately, does the world all make sense? He says yes. Ultimately, from the perspective, infinite perspective of the Creator, is the world good? Yes. Does it all make sense? Yes. Is the whole that's going to fit well from the ultimate absolute vision? The answer is yes. We'll write that history. I'm sorry? We'll write that history. We'll write that history. Oh, you're saying you can't judge it on the individual level. You, you cannot have judge it from a small, narrow slice. It's a big picture kind of a story. That's what he's saying over here. Good. Let me skip to the next Zion. The Kitsur, Zion, bottom of the page, he says, In short, the Ani of the fatalistic, cumulative, destiny living. Can't say, what is it? Zil Kiyum Pa'u, which you said before. This is an active sort of life. Kishadam Nitzavu Mata Saviva. When a man confronts his environment, into which he was thrown, my little child over there, Shlachta, from an understanding that he is a unique, singular being, free, independent. It's, he has the ability not to lose in his struggle with the environment outside, because he's independent and free, he can create, but he can... But can't say that. No, of course Obviously, not. Obviously, you can't no. compare it to that story. No, of course you not. Can't. You're absolutely right. Not to that. No, that's the age of 13. Whatever the age may be. Right. That he should be taught that, look, he was born with X, Y, and Z, and by the best being hungry. But, but he should overcome that, whatever it may be. Overcome whatever evil that you are experiencing, and not wallow in your misery, but rather creatively deal with your destiny, and fashion a new destiny. The basic model of the I, it's not my choice I was born. Not my choice I was born. But you can live freely, willingly, a life of creativity. The man is born as an object. He dies as an object. But it's in his power to live as a subject, creating and inventing, innovating. Hamat Biyan Hayab, that gives a stamp on his life, his stamp of individuality. He becomes an individual person, becomes a spiritually valuable person. Stephen Hawkins, who is uh, one of the most famous of contemporary theoretical physicists, has been stripped for the last 20, 30 years. He's a quadriplegic, cannot utter a word, cannot move a finger. And yet he's married, has children, and is one of the most brilliant theoretical, physical expression of the universe known to mankind. Now, what do you think about that first? He's physically disabled to every degree you could imagine and worse. They said he was going to die in 1963. Now he's living 30 years later and he's produced the most important work in th- theoretical physics in the last 100 years or 50, 75 years. Stephen Hawking from England. We know him. We read about him. He's been popularized. He wrote his they, Facebook... They made a movie. They made a movie off of him. What's the name of the movie? I don't know. They made a movie of him, as well as his famous book is called, um... He was born that one? He grew to that one. He did. But his, his significance is lasting. You know, and, and now he's a uh, you know, married child, whatever. However that happened. He created and fashioned and shaped. No, he's not born that way, I don't believe. But, he, you know, at the age of 20, I think he was, now he's about 50, this happened to him. He didn't give up. To the contrary. Sorry, I'm going over time. <laughs> You did that on purpose, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, that was yeah, my hands are up here. <laughs> <laughs> but you have it so somehow have it. rigged that you wiggle your toe with it getting tired. So what are you saying? <laughs> like in school. That's exactly what are you saying. <laughs> that one, whatever the reality to which one was born, whatever it may be, right. one has to creatively, like actively <laughs> shape one's destiny to the degree that one, that one can do it. What does that have to do with the whole uh, uh, argument of, of, uh, evil? Uh, of evil? 
to say that you cannot solve the problem of evil. You're born as Stephen Hawkins was born. Right. In this horrible, debilitated, physically inept state. Right. So what do I do now? I become a brilliant physicist, use my mind. I cannot speak, but I can only blink an eye to get my message across. Right. And I've got a computer which, which understands what blink and what actually saying. So that's what he did. He creatively fashioned us. He rather than something saying. But I but think that, that that story is irrelevant in, in relation to our argument of child? putting evil in perspective. That's really what he's doing, though. Stephen Hawkins put the evil because I said, look, I lost my body, but I have my mind. I know, but the, the, the way it's coming across to me is <coughs> he overcame evil. He didn't overcome it. He couldn't understand it. He didn't understand it. He grew up despite it. He grew up despite it. He rebuilt his house despite the fact that his house was spelled by the hurricane. This is when Rallo said, like, crying, what am I going to do? No, this is what happened to me. Why me? I don't know why me. Give me the hammer, give me the nails, I'll build the house. To trivialize the example. Yeah. Taking the next step, if I may, was the, the rush, rationale for science and for, for modern technology and everything. Was that the next step? Just to go back to your donut story, to preserve the donut so that we can send it, scientifically preserve the donut so that we could send it to the opera or wherever? So it doesn't, doesn't say that. But is that, is that the rationale? He would say that science should be studied simply because it's study science. It's part of the human endeavor to conquering the world. Right, but, but we were able to preserve the donut so we could What's ship it What's the use that I should make of right. my mind? Because ultimately, yes, a good person is one who will, who will use, use that intelligence, intelligence right. and to... Correct, exactly. Yeah. In other words, our ob obligation is to conquer the world. Conquer it from physical disease, conquer it, expand... That's the nature of the human mind. Expansively. Of course, withdrawal from conquering the world is Shabbat. I cannot go down the Creator that can expansively, endlessly, infinitely manipulate nature. No, I must withdraw the Shabbat, but... On Sunday morning, right. I expand my intellectual and physical horizons. Now, what do I do with that expansion? Is it intrinsically good? It is good, intrinsically good. But it should also be used to improve the lot of mankind. You're right, in that, in that sense. Correct. Okay, so let's get to the next, the next five words. <coughs> As we said above, the the destiny-like existence of the man, of this person who sees himself as a man of destiny, not fate, Bokat, breaks through the Allah and rises up a whole original approach to problem of evil. As long as the man struggles with the fatalistic existence, his approach to evil, his bate, is expressed only with, an, uh, with a philosophical, intellectual approach. He is a creation, he's a creature that suffers who does not have the power to struggle with evil in order to lessen it or to save himself for a higher purpose. He's just a suffering and is wallowing in his misery. As long as he's a fatalistic person, he has lost his ability <coughs> to solve it, to, to deal with it. He's a fatalistic person. He cannot conquer anything in his existence. Life has taken over him. He is fed from without. And his life, uh, his life is completely stamped with what image, with what stamp? The stamp of the environment does what it wants with him. Unless it's fed, he doesn't eat. He is completely immobilized by the evil that he has experienced. Next over. Chapter 10. The Ram, however, The man of destiny, in contrast to that, he approaches life realistically, as it is, and does not desire harmonistic He doesn't try to take a harmonizing principle and hide the evil and to hide it away from sight. Then I who The man of destiny is a real realist, and he does not <coughs> shock by his standing face to face against evil. He's not shocked? He's that not, um, yeah. Shocked? Yeah. In the top. He's not pushed back, so to speak. He's not pushed back. In other words, we face evil. What do we do with it? We conquer it. We do what we can. We deal with it. We don't simply let it conquer us. It's a very proactive kind of approach, this whole issue. It's very existential. Take evil and do something. For another 
Eight, yeah, two or more guys. Which I said? Right. Yeah. The cube, because the man so of destiny lives a full life. He flies above. But the blessed was not a clue to this person uh, who is created is do it. Fruitful, multiply. Keep sure to see that. Conquer the environment. The guru and put it under you. If you don't, if you don't rule over it, it will rule over you. To in that situation, there's no that question over here. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Because there was a lot all around them. They thought, sure. And they said, that's it. And, you know, okay. This yeah, it makes sense. It's logical, but he doesn't say so. I don't want to impose it upon him. Right. But it is logical. I understand what you're saying. Sure. Yeah. And looking at from history, like you said. What is his approach to life? This person who is afflicted. His approach to life is halakha and ethics. Halakha, halakhi musari, ethical halakha. And it's absent every kind of philosophical specul- specul- speculation. When a man of destiny suffers, he says to himself, Yes, no, no, there is evil. I need any machishibor. I'm not going to deny it. any machateavav. I'm not going to try to do well with it with lecturing people. No. What I want to know now is from the point of view of halakha, to Adam and Sayyidah back in our session, I said, What do I do about it? What's the halakhic response to evil? What should halakha be able to do with everything in life? Tell me how to eat, how to sleep, how to drink, how to be intimate with my life, everything halakha, correct? 